morning. I'm going to talk this morning about a never-changing Christ in an ever-changing world. We live in a, in a world that is totally changing so rapidly. Things are moving so quickly and changes are happening so quickly that we can't keep up with that. We don't always understand exactly how fast the world is changing, but because of the uh, knowledge that we have with computers and, and we have the ad adaptability, I know that President Trump had spoken and he said something about the fact that technology has advanced so much so that, that the whole global nation should be on the same time frame because we all work almost simultaneously around the globe. I don't know about all of that, but I will tell you this, I don't know about the world changing, but everything around us changes. How many of you can, can think of something that's changed in your lifetime? Some of you older folks can say a couple times. How many of you, do you remember when you didn't have a cell phone, Brother Farr? I remember when dirt was not even growing on <laughs> He, he can remember that. He, can, he came over with uh, Moses on the uh, ark. <laughs> Well, Noah was the one on the ark, but Moses was probably direct. But I'm just saying, I'm just try, trying to stump my adult Sunday school teacher, and he's looking at me like, Pastor, you're going to get it. But I will tell you what, what all of this is about, and everything about change happens. The world is changing. We are changing. How many of you realize you have changed? If you looked in the mirror and said, who is that? that is looking at me. We've changed our hairdo. We have changed our, the way we dress. We change, and, and so many different varieties of the way that we have changed. We have changed in our shape. The doctor looked at me the other day and he said, you're out of shape. And I said, no, I'm just in a circle shape. I went from a stick to a circle. And it's a whole lot more fun to be in a circle than it is to be in a stick. But anyways, if we look at this scripture, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. One of the things that we can hold on to is the hope that as, as everything changes around us, you see the world will, will change and it's ever evolving and ever changing. Everything changes, if you will. Seasons change. How many of you realize that, that seasons are changing? I know that in Arizona, we go, we go from hot to hotter, and that's about the way we change. But I love it when I can see the leaves falling, and, and I can look at the, the trees, and I can see things changing. We are in a season of change. And I love that. We also see that time changes. And we, we, if, if, did anybody else's clock mess up this morning? I have a clock that sits beside my bed, and, and I usually look at my phone to see what time it is when I get up, but this morning I happened to look over and my clock beside my, my bed is, is on mountain time, and so it, it, it automatically changed, and I, I looked at it and I said, boy, I'm either running really late or something, and so I had to look at my phone to make sure time changes. I know that, um, you know, Cher, she was... You know, you probably don't know that singer, do you? But Cher, was a, the famous singer, she said, she was singing about it, and she said, if I could turn back time. You know? Jim Croce sang a song, and it said, time in a bottle. If you could store time and keep time and keep the prevalency of time. But time is ever-changing, and things are changing around us. It goes on, and it says... Things change. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes verse three, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, To everything there is a season, and a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear, a time to sow. A time to keep silent. Need to underline that one for a few folks. And a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. To everything, there is a time and a season. 
And these things are all in its process of change. And they all are in a, in a, in a constant change. There is a season. There is a change. We, we change and the world is changing. One of the things that we realize is everything changes. Men change. Go ahead and pull that up. Men change. We see that man is born of a woman and, and is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh down like, like, uh, forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeteth also as a shadow and does not continue. Go ahead and see what it says there in James chapter 4, verse 14. It says, Where you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Men change. We are changing. And I'm not just talking about our shape and our ideas and our thoughts. We are, we are changing. You are born to die because we have a beginning. We understand that we have an end. Amen? We realize the fact. How many of you remember the day you were born? Whew. Beginnings are what we're made of. And beginnings have the opportunity to understand that there is an end. One day we'll look and we'll realize that this life has gone very quickly. How many of you have looked back to realize that? I mean, it doesn't seem like, the, it seems like just the other day when I, I was going through and, and my wife and I had been married, we hadn't been married that long, and I remember when the, my son was born and I have those flashbacks of moments and I think, you know, that was just the other day. But then I saw him and he's 35 years old. I said, what happened to you? We see time as, a, as it evolves and man evolves and we all look towards the beginning, but we realize the end is ahead. And some of us <clears throat> are closer to the end than the beginning. And we have to realize we're not made in this world to live forever. We're here for a short period of time to make as much impact for the kingdom of God as we can. And then we'll be with the King of kings and Lord of lords. When we realize that... We can look forward to the change. But one of the best things that I can tell you is that God does not change. Christ says He does not change. He says, for I am the Lord, I do not change in Malachi 3 and 6. I like what it says here in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 10 through 12. It says, and you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all grow old like a garment. Like a cloth, you will fold them up. And they will be changed. But you are the same. And your years will not fail. One of the things that we need to realize is, is that God is eternal. He doesn't change. He always has been and He always will be. He doesn't, he does, he's not affected by it. Believe it or not, God was not setting up in heaven saying, oh, i got to set my watch and make sure I do the time change thing. God is not affected by time. And, and one of the hardest things for us to realize is, is that God being eternal, He has existed before we were here. God had no beginning. He always has been. And He always will be. Go ahead and pull that next one up. He is... Constant in His love. He is love and His love never changes. And we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love and He who abides in love abides in God and God in Him. The thing that I can tell you is this. If God never changes, His love never changes. But you can look in the Old Testament and I've had people say, well, God was a God of revenge and anger and He was much more angry in the Old Testament. That God was still a God of love. And God is still a God of love. God is still a God of love. Amen. God didn't change. He, still, he loved in the Old Testament. He tried to bring the children of Israel. And if they would have accepted His love and been obedient to His love, we would not be in the shape that we're in. The world wouldn't be different today. But because they rejected His love and failed to obey Him in that love, that's why we're in the shape that we're in. That's why the world is falling apart. That's why hatred becomes such a big part of our world today. It's because we haven't seen and kept the love of God. The Bible says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. 
to define God to a world that needs a, a Savior, to, to, a, to define God as the God of love. Now, somebody said, well, how does God, a God of love let this happen or that happen? The results of these things that have happened are not so much the work of God, but the work of the enemy against God. It's the hatred and bitterness of this world that consumes it continuously. God speaks of love and teaches us to love Him and to love others. If this world would just learn to realize that God is love, and because we have God in us, we should learn to love, we wouldn't be as apt to be as angry at this world. The Word will never change. His Word will be the same. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. The truth is, and the promises of this, and somebody said, well, this is just man's word, but it's man's words inspired by God. God told them what to write, and they wrote what God said. And the confirmation of that is, is the prophecies that are given and the work of God. God's word will never fail. It is the truth that you can stand on for eternity and forever. His word is truth. The Bible says we should hide the word in our heart that we would not sin against it. The Bible teaches us and tells us that, that we should know the truth and the truth will set us free. We need to realize the promises of it. There were days when we used to put our hand on the Bible and say nothing but the truth, the whole truth. We would put our promise to it. Because this was the evidence and the only foundation of truth that will never fail. It's the Word of God. And yet we hold upon the promises of everything else. We realize the Word of God is true. And sometimes I tell people, I said, the reason that we struggle with so much of our problems in this world today is because we never read about His promises to us. When He said it, I believe it. Amen. And if He said it and I believe it, then I'm going to tell you something. We don't need to disobey it or twist it so it fits what we want. That's the struggle with the world today, Don. They want to try to twist this thing so it fits what they, what they want to do and how they want to live. Well, God understands my sin. God understands. No, God doesn't. If God said it and said it's a sin, it's a sin. If God said it is wrong and tells you thou shalt not, then you need to not do it. Sometimes we like to push it just as far as we can with God. Well, God really doesn't say, that, that's really not what it says in there. And we begin to twist it so it fits what we want. And the God of love, I've heard it said the other day, we just talked about God as love, and I heard somebody say the other day, if God was really a God of love, He would send no one to hell. God sends no one to hell. You choose by rejecting Christ, you choose hell. The destination of heaven and hell is all upon your choice. And when we choose life, we choose Jesus Christ, we follow it obediently because God is love. And He loved us so much that He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. God is love. And God's love will last forever. And His Word will last forever. And the promise of His Word is to fulfill His love for us. Go ahead and pull the next one up. His power will never change. I love this one. The Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. It says, and, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at, the right, at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in also the worlds to come. Philippians chapter 2 says this, Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee should bow, and those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and, at, and that, at that name every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When we realize the power of God, we realize his power never changes. God is still omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. God is everywhere at all times. Amen? Amen? He was here before we showed up. 
He was here before we came. He was already here. And I know we sing a lot of times about, come Lord, come Lord. What we're asking God to do is move more in us than it is for us. You see, we're the ones who show up. Sometimes. We're the ones who show up late. You know, God is never late. He's always right on time, even though sometimes we have a schedule that we want Him to make. But God is always on time. And sometimes we, he, it's, it may not be the way that we think it is, but God is able to do what, what no other can do. And, and, and we've got to realize that He is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. That He is all-powerful. He is all-knowing. He knows everything before it happens. Nothing catches God by surprise. Not even Donald Trump's tweets catch God by surprise. And, and, and sometimes we've got to realize the things that are happening in this world may, may seem like it catches God off guard, but God said these things must happen. He told us in Timothy that this world was going to change and was going to get worse. We live in a world that's so crazy. We're kind of comfortable here right now. It wasn't very long ago that we were very comfortable and all of a sudden... Stock market crashed, society went crazy, jobs were lost, homes were, were for sale. Half the price that they are right now. Things change. And they're always changing. But God is the same. God is the same no matter the circumstances that you're in. When I am sick or when I'm well, He is the same. He is still my God. When, when, I, when I am by the, the graveside or by the bedside, God is still the same. Amen. When it doesn't matter the circumstances that I find myself in or the situations, God is still the same. And I don't know about you, but the consistency of a God like that is what I want in my life. In a world full of change and, and confusion and all that's going around, I want a God who is the same that I can depend on because I know exactly how it's going to turn out. I can trust in God and He will take care of me. Amen. When we look at the world and the chaos and the confusion, if they could only understand and grasp the reality of the power of God, they could see God deliver and change in their life. When we look at the, the, the world and all the things that are happening, there is one thing that is evident, is that we need to change. We need to change. We as believers need to change. Unbelievers need to change. We are changing. The Bible tells us that we, are in a, we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. By you do this right here. This is our problem. Just point to your head right here. Just do this. I think this is most of you got a spot up there for a brain. If I only had a brain, as the tin man would say. But you know this right here, because of this, and the distance between here will transform and keep people from serving and surrendering their life to Christ. The distance of about 12 inches. Okay, some that are taller, Brother Bledsoe, might be... From the brain to the heart. Because your heart will tell you that God loves you. But your brain will try to figure out how. And why. And why not. And, and, and we struggle with the reality of this distance between it. We need to change. Everyone thinks of change and changing the world. But no one thinks of changing themselves. Oh, we want a better place. We want a better world. We want everything better in the world. But the first thing we got to realize is change must start with me. I have to change. I don't care if you've been serving the Lord. Everything has to change. And sometimes God brings about change in us because he needs to improve us. Creating us a better heart, a better servant's heart. A better lifestyle. Change begins from the, outside, from the inside out. We've got to change our heart. We must be different than the world. We cannot act and be like the world. 
The Bible tells us here in Romans 12 and 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If we act and react just like the world, the world has swallowed us up. But the difference must be that we as Christians and we as believers, there's something different about the way we act and react. The world is, is ever-changing, and we've talked about this. We, we, we share with you how fast the world is changing, how lifestyles have changed, and all the things that are happening in the world that are bringing about this change so quickly. And I'm going to tell you something. What they need to see is someone who walks in faith in God. Do you know the world looks at the church and sees how we will react and how we will... Uh, 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 come on. I mean, if you've got a bumper sticker on your car that says, if you love Jesus, don't go around flipping everybody off in traffic. That's a quotable if you want to quote that. No, I'm just kidding. Sometimes you've got you to realize if you go around and tell everybody that you're a Christian and then you start acting like a devil, you've got a problem. And we're sending a mixed message to a world who needs the consistency of one who walks by faith and not by sight. One who is constant and consistent. If God is the same, then if we have God in us, we must live and learn to walk in the consistency of His walk. Amen? Amen. Go ahead and pull that next one up. We need to change. Why should we change? Let's look at this. Because we are miserable the way things are. If you're not happy with how your life is going, surrender your life to Jesus Christ and He will direct you in a greater way and He will direct you to better things. God has a desire to bless you and not curse you. God wants to bring about your, your blessing in your life. And when we understand that, we will surrender to it. Go ahead. The opportunities are overwhelming not to change. It is easier for us to go along with the crowd. It is easier for us to fit in. It is easier for us to, to surrender to the world's structure than it is to go against it. How popular are you when you say that homosexuality is a sin before God? I didn't say that. The Bible said that. And if his word is true, then he stands upon that word. But you're not a very popular person when you say that. As a matter of fact, you're not a very popular person when you stand up and say, I believe in Jesus Christ. It's easier for us to go along with the world and the, what the world is doing. We just want to fit in. We don't want to ruffle any feathers. I had a friend of mine that for Halloween, he... He said, I, I decided that I wasn't going to decorate my house. And for years, he, he was a youth pastor, and, and he would always do his house up in, in all kinds of weird things. And, and he said, this year, I just put a simple cross out. He said, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my Lord and Savior. I will serve Him continually. And the bottom of it, it said, will you? And that's all he put out, and he had a light shining on it. He had people drive by and throw things at it, honk at it. And he said, I have never had so much reaction to anything that I've ever put out. But he said, when I quit going along with the world and became different than the world, they didn't like it very much. You see, it's easy for us just to fit into what the world says. That's what we're supposed to be. When the Bible says that we're supposed to be in the world but not of the world, for, to come out from among them and be separate and be different. We should be different. We should act different. We should lift different because we are different. We should be changing. And there's got to be change in our life. Change doesn't happen overnight. And I want us to look very quickly at this. And it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things have become new. That word have become new is a process. In actual, the, the actual readings in the Greek word actually means that we are in a process of change. Do you know that when you accept Jesus Christ, you still have to struggle with your past? 
Because it rises up to tempt you and lure you and to conceive in its very nature that it justifies your sin. It will, Satan is the father of lies. He wants to tell you that disobedience is okay. That God understands and God compromises. Listen, God does not tolerate nor will he comprehend or con uh, allow us to congregate the very idea of him accepting sin. God says, be holy for I am holy. The nature of that word, it's not what you look like on the outside. It's about what you are on the inside that must transform. When I become a new creature, and in the process of my changing, I had things Al, I had to get rid of. I had things I had to deal with. And believe it or not, I'm a pastor, and I still have to say, God, help me to change so that I'm a better person. I still get mad when somebody cuts me off in traffic. Mm, 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 mm. And don't you dare steal my parking place. If I've been waiting, with, I'm sitting there waiting the other day, and, a, and, a, and I had, oh, you know how you cruise the parking lot and you hope you get one up close? And I was cruising the parking lot and I was waiting. And I had turned my turn signal on and I found a lady who I'd, I'd followed her to her car. She thought I was stalking her, I bet. But I followed her to her car. She got in her car and when she turned, she went to back out. And she backed out the opposite way. And I had my turn signal on. And I was just getting ready to zip in. About that time, somebody zipped right through that. Followed that lady right out. Pulled in that parking spot. I'm sitting there with my turn signal on. And I opened my door. And I got out of my car. And I walked out. I said, did you not see my turn signal? <laughs> well, I didn't even see your car. I said, what the... What in the world are you doing driving if you can't see my car or my turn signal? And then I realized, what if they show up at my church on Sunday? <laughs> God, forgive me. Forgive me, God, of being human and struggling with this change that has to take place in me. And you can laugh at me, but some of you need to realize that God's still working on you to change. There's some changes that have to take place in all of us. Come on, look at that person beside you and say, he's working on you. Wow. He's got a lot of work to do in us. Amen. Some of us more than others, right, Mark? Amen. Change is not automatic. It's a process. Change is not another person's job. It's yours by choice. You must move from being a worm to a butterfly. Change is worth the investment. When I change, it is worth the investment. When you see that old nasty worm, and you see that worm, you say, hey, yeah. but then you see that beautiful butterfly, do you realize that that butterfly had to be the worm first? Before it could become that beautiful butterfly, that transformation has to happen in you. Because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. No matter how morally good we are, we're still living in sin until we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. The Bible tells us in Romans that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And with that nature, there is only one thing that we can do with that sin, and that is to let it go and follow Christ and be transformed as we renew our mind in his word. That's why I tell people all the time, if you're struggling with where you are in your life, open the gospel of John and begin to read how much God really loves you. You cannot read how much God loves you and question whether he cares enough to take care of you. But some of us will close it up and say, well, I guess I'm just struggling with that. Oh, God loves us. Oh, there's a, a little song that says, oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you. 
and me. Do you realize God loves you? Do you realize that He cares? He, he's not looking at you and saying, how many mistakes? And come on. I'm sure we've all had people in our life that tell us how many mistakes we've made and remind us of them all the time. Don't look at that person sitting beside you. Whatever you do right now. There is always, and we, and we get that concept. But you know what God said? If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our unrighteousness. And He does. He, he's not holding it against us. He doesn't look at our past and say, All right, there's still, he, he realizes who we are and what we are, and He helps us to change so that we can glorify Him in what we do. Change is the process of what God calls us to do. But when we become that, we can change the circumstances. Roberto, I'm going to ask if you would to come right now. I want you to think about this. If change is really necessary, and change is the process, God never changes. He is always the same. He is always loving. He is always compassionate. I just can't get over that song, James. Oh, how he loves me. Even when I was a rebellious, rotten teenager, he loved me. Even when I, I made mistakes, even when I questioned the reality of whether there is a God, he still loved me. He never stopped loving me. He never stopped when I made mistakes. He still loved me. And he encouraged me, get back on that path. He loved me enough sometimes to discipline my life. Come on. The Bible says whom God loves, he chastens. You know what that word chasten actually translates to an old southern Indiana boy? Sometimes when God chastens us, he takes us to the woodshed and whoops us good. And lets us know that we need to make some changes. My daughter Brittany, some of you know my daughter Brittany. She's such a, almost an angel. She's so good. She's such a good girl. She makes me sick. But anyways, she's such a good girl. When she was going through her teenage years, she was kind of mouthy. And I, I, I'm reminded sometimes, because I look at her now and I think, God, she is so good. And God said she had to change. And my mind goes back to the time when her mom had to get on to her and she smacked her in the mouth and said, you'll not talk that way to me. Now you can say, oh, that's abuse. She never talked back to my, my wife again. I can tell you a whole nother message about sparing the rod and spoiling your children. I've seen it. But I will tell you this. One of the things you got to understand is God loves you enough that He will discipline your life. He will scold you when you do your own thing. He will scold you. When I was living in rebellion and I was angry with God, I was angry at everything about God. I even questioned that there's a God that really does love. God let me have a car wreck but he spared my life. I felt that sting of his chastening at that moment. And Mark, when I realized it, and God spoke to me, he said, I spared your life the last time. When I realized that, I realized there is a God who loves me so much so. My dad used to tell me all the time, and he'll be watching this a little bit later on, but when he... He used to tell me on the side, he'd set me down before he would whip me and he would tell me, son, this is going to hurt me more than it is you. He said, I love you. But if I didn't love you, I wouldn't care. But I care, so I'm going to correct you. God's not up in heaven waiting for you to make a mistake so he can whip you. He's trying to direct you in his love. 